by both First Bank, proud partner of the Minnesota State High School League. The Pepsi-Cola bottling company, nothing else is a Pepsi. Your Viking Land GMC dealers. The American Dairy Association, on behalf of your local dairy farmers. Dodge, and your local Dodge dealer. Menards, helping you build America's heartland for 36 years. U.S. West Direct Yellow Pages, and your heartland Chevrolet Geo dealers. Now, Minnesota 9 Sports Director, Jeff Grayson. Chester Mayo Spartans, 12-1. and one. They lost their first game of the year this year and then rattled off 12 straight. They'll take down the Stillwater Ponies in the double-A championship game when we come back to the Metrodome in just a moment. By the age of seven, he's already gone on safari. Out fucks the lion. Come face to face with wild animals. Harmonized with a hyena. <laughs> Matched wits with a meerkat. Tastes like chicken. Solved a puzzling mystery. Painted a masterpiece. Spelled words with a warthog. Dave. Yikes. And that was all before breakfast. Disney's new Lion King Activity Center on CD-ROM. Once again, the magic of Disney begins with a mouse. What happens when you take the best-selling trucks in America and customize them for the best place to live? You get the Northland Edition F-150. These trucks come with two-tone clear coat paint, custom wheels and tires, special Northland markings, and air conditioning at no extra charge. Right now with a 750 cash bonus and only 10% down, leaves a loaded regular cab XLT for only $229 a month. So look for the mark of the Northland Edition F-150s, the best trucks to drive in the best place to live. Spread some holiday cheer with Dutch Boy from Menard. Brighten your home with a fresh coat of Dutch Boy confidence. An interior flat paint great for walls, ceilings, and more. Just $6.94 a gallon. Warm up your floors with Armstrong flooring. A wide selection is on sale, including Prevail. It's extra thick plus stain resistance. Just $7.77 a square yard. Get a new Armstrong floor for the holidays at Menard. Save big money at Menard. It's Slumberland's biggest after Thanksgiving sale ever with no payments and no interest for 13 months on everything. No payments and no interest till January 1997 at Slumberland. Running in a new pair of cross trainers can get you pumped. Getting a second pair free can get you really pumped. Sport Mart's gear up day. Buy any previously reduced green peg shoes or apparel item and get a second free. Ford Mart, 60,000 kinds of adrenaline. Ladies and gentlemen, before the coin toss, we invite you to stand as the Anoka High School Concert Choir, directed by Bruce Phelps, leads us in our national anthem.
singing the anthem here tonight. Anoka, of course, the defending state champions. They were the top-ranked team, but Stillwater ranked number three at the time, defeated Anoka back in October, and the Stillwater Ponies have been ranked number one ever since. The captains are meeting at midfield. Stillwater, a tremendously talented football team. They've Matt got it all. They've got great size, great speed, great quickness. You know that uh, they do have that size, speed, and quickness, but they have tradition, too. In fact, when I first came up here in 74, they were going to the uh, state championship, and I think they won it in 75, and they've been going ever since. They've won three titles down, so they do have experience. They do have size this year. Mayo won the toss. They'll get the opening kickoff. George Stoll, of course, has won three state uh, championships. They did not make it to the playoffs last year, and that broke a string of 15 straight seasons that the Stillwater Ponies had been in the playoffs. Now, after a year hiatus, they hope to make it a clean sweep and go all the way through. For a double-A championship, it would be the school's fourth. Rochester Mayo won here on Friday night. They beat Cambridge. And a lot of the players and a lot of the fans came up here Saturday night to see the big matchup between Burnsville and Stillwater. And unfortunately for Rochester Mayo, three players were involved in a car accident back in Rochester after the team or the players had returned home to Rochester. Thankfully, Two of the three will be able to play in tonight's game, but the place kicker and hunter Jeff Robb is unable to play. And it was a daunting task to begin with for Mayo. Stillwater favored in this game, but to suffer a blow like that, as you see Jeff Robb, he is the hunter and kicker for Mayo, and he is unable to play. He has a compressed vertebrae as a result of the accident last Saturday night, and the Thankfully, it looks as if everyone involved in the accident will be okay. You know, and that's a, a good part of it, uh, that uh, the players will be uh, okay. And uh, But not only that, but it takes the goal out of uh, Mayo because this is their first appearance uh, in a state uh, title game. And for George Stoll, he hopes to win a championship for the fourth time. They came to him back in 1975, 1982, and 19. So it's been a while. Trying to finish a long drop of the championship here in 1995. Kicking it off for Stillwater, Aaron Danielson. And back to receive the kick for Rochester Mayo. Greg Picker and Andy Jennison. made by Brad Fesler. And it'll be first and ten from the 20-yard line. Here's the Mayo lineup. Steve Graber, their quarterback. Brian Finky, one of the players involved in the accident last Saturday, will start, even though earlier in the week he had his neck in a brace, as Jeff Robb did along the sidelines here tonight. For the I formation. Graber will throw it. And the tackle made by Gabe Elwine. Here's the Stillwater front five. Nate Dwyer, their top tackler. 27 sacks over the last two years for Nate Dwyer. And a good secondary as well. Picked up with nine on the play. Wine again with the tackle for Stillwater. Here, uh, Ryan Feeke takes the handoff here. He 
tucked up through the middle. This kid looks pretty smooth as he runs the ball here. And, uh, of course, last, uh, well, this past season, had over 1,300 yards and nine TDs. A pitch to Finky. Pollard as he got to the 40-yard line. Again, maybe a yard. Eric Williams made the tackle. Williams, one of the inside linebackers for Stillwater. Gain of one. It'll be... Well, they'll give him a game of two, and we'll call it second and eight. Number 88 on the back of the, of the helmets in honor of Nick Teachin, who was injured here a week ago. Broke his leg in the game against Cambridge, and of course is unable to play. Pinky on a second down carry, takes it out near midfield. Eric Williams again with the tackle. And they don't seem the least bit timid about handing the ball off to Ryan Finke here in their first possession. Yeah, I like the look of Finke and the way, the way he walks, the way he runs. I mean, he runs with authority right here. I mean, he has those long strides. And right here, his second effort picks up another three yards. Third down and two for Mayo. sequence of downs here on their first possession. He's showing me something, and I think showing this his team that you know, he's ready to play. And offensive line, look at the hole. It's open wide enough that uh, you could have gone through the hole. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Pinky spilled as he crosses the 40-yard line, a pickup of three before Braden Simonette makes the tackle. Everybody knows where Stillwater is. Everybody knows where Rochester is. This is the fourth game of our five-game championship series where teams in or around Rochester are involved. And Rochester Mayo hoping to pull off an upset here in the double-A championship game. Pick up a two on the last carry, second and eight. Pinky. Another first down as he is filled, crossing the 30-yard line. Perhaps a touchdown-saving tackle made by Adam Rump. You will hear that name a lot tonight. Binky still has uh, control and uh, command. A lot of confidence in his running ability here. He strides and cuts outside. Shooting tackle there brings him down. Otherwise, he could have been off to the races. Adam Rock with two big interceptions last week against Burnsville in the fourth quarter. Seven pickoffs on the season. On the reverse, Grant Sticker. Still back at the 33-yard line. Tackle made by Eric Wolf. Greg Picker has had a tremendous postseason for the Mayo Spartans. Three touchdowns last week against Burnsville. He fell forward to the original line of scrimmage. Got about three yards on the play. Eric Williams with the tackle. Twice this year, Pinky has set the school single game rushing mark. Far and away, their top running back in terms of yards gained during the season. So they're very fortunate indeed to have him available for the championship game tonight, given what happened last Saturday. Third and 11. Graver, pressure, throwing. Incomplete. Nearly intercepted along the near sideline by Adam Rung. It will be fourth and 11. Fourth and 11. To the 
far sideline, picked off at the 20 yard line. This is Ryan Fletcher. Knocked out of bounds inside the male 30. And the tackle made by the quarterback, Steve Graber. We're taking out a look as I was saying that the hardest pass and go is the out pattern here. And Fletcher comes across, picks it up, and takes it down about 30, 40 yards down the field and uh, gets Stillwater out of a jam here. His ninth interception of the year with 7.25 left in the first quarter. No score in the double-A title game. It's been a great sales year here for us at Universal Ford Toyota. We want to say thanks to you with a gigantic Thanksgiving sale. So forget $300 less for now. That's our goal every day. We're taking our final markdowns on our remaining 95 cars and trucks. We're offering Thanksgiving sale introductory prices on our factory fresh 96 models. Plus, we've added dozens of fresh trade-ins to our yellow tag used car sale. But only through Saturday, December 2nd. And only at Universal Ford Toyota. A few money-saving minutes from anywhere. Introducing the new Quality Inn and Suites, formerly Royalty Suites. The name has changed, but the ownership and management haven't. That means the service, quality, and style to which you're accustomed to hasn't changed a bit. A stay at Quality Inn offers a chance to relax in a two-room suite with connecting rooms. Accommodations feature refrigerators, microwaves, guest laundry, pool, free airport shuttle service, and pets are welcome. Come for the comfort, stay for the quality. Quality Inn and Suites of Rochester. This is a Stillwater team, Matt, that isn't used to giving up points. They had six shutouts during the year and a big play early for the defense. And Ryan Fletcher. Fletcher takes it uh, interception. Takes it 49 yards for the return. On the 32-yard line, Stillwater on his first possession. Hand off right up the middle and a burst for 11 yards for Bill McGlynn. Joe Seahusen made the tackle for the Spartans. They'll come out and measure for a first down as we look at George Soule's offensive unit. Aaron Runk is a name we'll call quite frequently. And they work behind a big and very good offensive line. The first down at the 21-yard line. A look at quarterback Justin Hesse. Mayo defense. Nick Teachin unavailable to play at the one end spot because he broke his leg last week here. And the secondary, Michael Ferrara, by the way, the driver in that accident, and he survived the accident uh, in great shape, thankfully. Second down and 12. Pesky. down after a gain of a yard, maybe two. Bo Price hit Hess and uh, held him for a game back to the original line of scrimmage, the 21. It's going to be third down and 10. Defense here is playing well for Rochester Mayo. Uh, Price has made two great plays uh, right in the middle there. Justin Hess, nine touchdowns, just three interceptions on the year. He's got a throwing down here, third and 10. through the middle for an apparent first down. Paul Seaver and Tom Prowl. Runk is the type of runner that, uh, you know, he had over 1,200 yards this uh, past season, and he takes it down, he knows where he has to go, and he gets the first down. It's a great running back at Stillwater, and Runk is the school career leader in touchdowns and yards. First and goal from the 10. 
Ruff leaps over a pile and falls at the five-yard line. 51 career touchdowns for Aaron Ruff. Paul Seaver made the tackle for Rochester Mayo. Quick dive play here off tackle. Ruff jumps over just about hurdles and gets through there. Uh, he seems like one of those runners that uh, he's a flasher. I mean, uh, has the ability to do that when needed. Second and goal. Run. Spin forward to the two, maybe the one-yard line. Among others, Paul Seaver in on the tackle again. McGlynn carried on first down, but since then the ball's gone to the workhorse, Aaron Run. And you want to go to your go-to guy as much as you can. He's brought you this far. You just don't leave him at the game plan. They spot the ball at the two. It's third and two. Clock running. That's the time left in the first quarter. up front by the offensive line. He bowls his way over and scores the first touchdown for Stillwater Pony. Aaron Danielson will try the extra point. Very good. Nice kick by Danielson. It's 7-0 Stillwater. Taking advantage of the turnover. The Ponies get the first touchdown of the game on the Dodge scoreboard at 7-0 Stillwater. Just in time for the best shopping season of the year, the three-day after Thanksgiving Super Sale at the New March Furniture. Save 30 to 60% on everything in the store. Sofas, sofa sleepers, glider rockers, rocker recliners, cedar chests, mattress sets, living room and dining room groups. 90 days, same as cash, six months interest-free for qualified buyers. Extended sale hours, Friday 9 to 9, Saturday 9 to 6, and Sunday noon to 6. Save 30 to 60%. The three-day after Thanksgiving Super Sale at the New March Furniture Leroy. Our styles will guarantee smiles this holiday season with a timeless gift from Rochester Lapidary Jewelers. Store-wide savings and our entire collection of fine jewelry during our pre-holiday sale. Are diamonds in your future? Choose from Rochester Lapidary's extensive collection of quality loose diamonds and engagement rings. Tease her with tanzanite, romance her with rubies, and dazzle her with diamonds at prices far less than you'd expect to pay during Rochester Lapidary Jewelers' pre-holiday sale. North on North Broadway. Is our St. Paul Pioneer Press roof cam. And you thought we had somebody <laughs> up there the entire time? Yes, I did. Dude. Remote that, control. Remote control. Who's running that guy? The two of them up there. Gino and Amos. I'm glad I'm down here. <laughs> Just running the remote control. Stillwater taking advantage of the turnover, turning it into seven points. Danielson will kick it away. Landing at the 20. Knocked down and picked up by Jennison. And he gets a yard or so outside the 20, and that's about it. Making the play on special teams, Brad Fesler. Still a long interception return by Ryan Fletcher. It took the Ponies just seven plays in about three and a half minutes to get into the end zone. Aaron Rump's 52nd career touchdown for Stillwater, making it a 7 nothing game. They had a pretty good drive going until the fourth down interception. First down carry, I believe it was 
Micker. Might have been Norwood, the fullback. Very little running room. Was Sean Grigsby, I beg your pardon, number 21. He's not played the full season for Mayo this year. He transferred to the Rochester area from Louisiana, and he's really given uh, the Spartans a big boost in the second half of the season. A look at the Stillwater sideline. for Finky. He's tripped up as he crosses the 25 out to the 29 before Eric Wolf makes the tackle. It'll be third down and two. And might have to do something about Finky's right foot. He might have to leave the ball in. No, he got it tied in time. Two twenty-five left in the first quarter. Hit at the line. He fell forward across the 30. It looks like he'll be a little bit short of first down yardage. Matt McDonald hit him right at the line of scrimmage. They'll spot the ball just across the 30-yard line stripe. It'll be fourth and a yard, and the Spartans will have to punt it away. And this is one of the trouble spots for Rochester Mayo in this game. Jeff Robb, their regular punter and kicker, Unable to play, and it'll be Clint Jepson who will do the kicking tonight in the championship game. Jepson standing back at the 15-yard line. Good snap. And that's still going to kick. It lands at the 47 and actually hit a Spartan player there. It was picked up and run back to the 45-yard line. We'll see where they spot it. Good field position for the Ponies. Michael Ferrara ended up making the tackle. We'll be back with more from the Dome in a moment. In life, you never know what will happen next. That's why you need to draw on the resources of the area's finest insurance agency, Herman Insurers. Herman Insurers have been serving customers for 65 years, providing the area with the expertise and superior service only an experienced agency can provide. When you're covered by Herman Insurers, you're indestructible. Give them a call today for all your insurance needs. As a kid, the rules were a lot simpler. To have a friend, you have to be a friend. Give the other person a chance, too. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. At Home Federal Savings Bank, those rules still apply because we have not forgotten what's really important. Trust, concern, caring. Home Federal Safety. Your local bank. Member FDIC. Top rank Stillwater leading 7 0 over Rochester Mayo. A great field position to start their second possession. Justin Hess brings the ponies to the line of scrimmage. Just fine for Hess and the Ponies. Didn't look like he fielded it cleanly, but he did the right thing, got control of the ball, and followed the line of scrimmage to the 40-yard line. Matt Greeson made the tackle. As Hess uh, clasped his hand, he has a, uh, a glove on his hand. I don't think a quarterback shouldn't have a glove on his hand, but he's a man. He fumbles the ball, he takes a good uh, ball up the middle there and takes up, you know, four yards. Not a design play, but it works. First quarter. And off to McGlynn. And McGlynn is close to a Stillwater first down across the 35. Michael Ferrara and David Johnson combined to make the hit for Mayo. And it is a Stillwater first down. So the Stillwater uh, running backs all have pretty close to over. Uh, at least six, seven hundred yards uh, east, which is a good balance running attack for the team. Might be the last play of the quarter. Yes, throwing to the 
sideline, and it's complete. Picked up of about nine yards, Adam Rump. The top receiver for the Ponies, making his 23rd catch of the year. And they will mark him out of bounds just across the 25, a yard short of first down yardage. Pass here, drops back, and he finds the receiver, Adam Rump. Run the out pattern, catch it, steps out, goes short of the first down, second and one. One second left. Flags are thrown. A pitch to Aaron Rump. And Rump hit hard as he gets to the 22, and then drags down to the turf. He has enough for a first down, paid the price, Andy Jennison. Hit him hard along the near sideline. And we'll see what the flags are about. Let's take a listen to what happened. Rump took a hard hit. And the penalty will nullify the run. Five yards marked off against the Ponies. The legal motion. And it'll be second down at six. That ends the first quarter, however. Stillwater leading at seven to nothing in the double-A title game. As an auto owner's insurance agent, I take your needs seriously and work hard to find you the best coverage available. As an independent agent, I'm able to provide you with the policies and coverage best suited to your individual needs. You see, auto owners select agents the same way you do, with a great deal of care. For the best coverage at reasonable rates, call your independent auto owner's agent today. The C.O. Brown Insurance Agency. Dayton's are filled with bargains store-wide during our huge after-Thanksgiving sale. Now through Sunday. You look at Justin Hess, the Stillwater quarterback, and man, you pointed it out. He's got a glove on his left hand, and it's the speculation on our point, but it might be related to an injury he had a couple weeks ago. He had a problem with a nerve in his left hand two weeks ago. And it was his left hand in here tonight, although he didn't wear one last week. He has a glove on the left hand. Not his throwing hand. It's not very often you see a quarterback with a batting glove. There's a pitch to Rook, and he's spun down as he crosses the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and five. Paul Seaver made the hit in the backfield. <laughs> As we're taking another look here, Cassie Pitts is back to run key. Takes off that big play here by number 20, turns the ball back in. And uh, when you plan to defense the you must turn the play in so the pursuit comes towards uh, the ball carrier. Excellent play. Third down and five. Randolph, but we will check the flag. Holding 
is the call against Stillwater. You know, when you throw a flag on the line of scrimmage, it's, it's always a chance of holding on the offensive line. Anything from the line of scrimmage back to the defense, to, to the running backs, is always something on the offense, usually. And we show the replay. We can't, oh, there's a takedown. <laughs> Excuse me. You. you saw the hold right there. <laughs> that was a takedown. That's like when he told those uh, big wrestlers taking it down. Chris Speckle, we believe, is guilty of the holding. He didn't really mean it. Though. First and 21. For the pony. Yes, throwing to run, bobbled it, caught it, and took it inside the 20 yard line. Elliot Norwood, or Andy Jennison, I beg your pardon, is the uh, tackler for Mayo on that play. Took Runk a while to finally get control of the football here. Matter of fact, running to your left is the hard thing to throw the ball and your, your receiver and you're bobbing the ball here with Runt and he catches, he gets control of it and he gets at least about uh, 11 yards of that uh, 21 and he gets first down. So second and uh, eight. Third down and about five yards. David Johnson with the tackle. In fact, David Johnson is starting as you see him here on the screen. Uh, first time, I think, getting, uh, for him, for the team to be in the state championship. But this is starting role because of the injury or the broke leg uh, to Nick. Uh, Teacher. That, teaching that's out uh, this game. Great, great play to have there. Third down and five. to about the 12-yard line, a little bit shy, I think. Well, in fact, he'll mark it back to the 13, and he is short. A first down yardage, Kevin Landher gets credit for the tackle for Mayo. Aaron Danielson, the kicker for Stillwater, has been perfect in field goal attempts this year. Three for three with a long of 37. A timeout has been called, charged to Stillwater. On the U.S. West scoreboard, the Ponies lead it by seven. Subway and KTTC are proud to bring you Sports Extra. We'll select the Subway Play of the Week, and the winning team wins a six-foot party sub. Before or after the game, grab your home team and score big at Subway with deals on your favorite six-inch or foot-long or party sub. Don't drop the ball. Feed the team at Subway. Feed your hunger with tasty servings and healthy savings at Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. Real savings. 12 months interest-free financing and the best selection of quality furniture in southern Minnesota. You'll find it all this weekend at Drury's in Fountain. Now during our Thanksgiving weekend furniture sale, Drury's are discounting everything from 30 to 50 percent or more. All on top brands like Thomasville, Pennsylvania House, and Flex Steel. And there's more. With a qualifying purchase, Drury's will give you 12 months interest-free financing. That's no finance charge for one full year. But it all ends Monday at 9 at Drury's in Fountain. It's been a long time since an outstate team has won the AA championship. The Warhead Spuds did it in 1987. Unranked, Mayo Spuds are trying to pull off an upset. The Ponies lead at 7 0. They've got fourth down and two, and the Ponies will go for it. Hess to run, and he won't be denied. He crashes across the 10, falls to the 7. It's a first down for Stillwater. Paul Seaver made the tackle. Fourth and uh, two, and Runk here just bowls across. Is not denied of uh, getting the first down and then some. First and goal from the eighth. going pretty tough off left tackle among others Niles Randolph and Kevin Landher George Stoll and the Pawnee scored a first quarter touchdown and 
in the playoffs. It's the first point allowed by Mayo in the first quarter. And now the Ponies are knocking on the door in the second quarter. Second down and goal from the seven. holidays fast approach home takes on a special meaning to make your home even more comfortable this holiday season shop trademarks home for the holiday sale at trademarks you'll find wonderful gifts for yourself and your loved ones gifts that last a lifetime with free layaway low low sale prices and the largest home furnishing selection in southern minnesota you'll find a gift for the home that will always be remembered come home for the holidays shop trademark today there's more than meets the eye in Spring Valley. It's like a three-sided coin. With March and Motor Company providing Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge for 60 years, Zymus Motors, who've been around for 24 years, giving you the best in Chevrolet, Buick, Olds, Pontiac, and Geo. And Peterson Motors for Ford and Mercury. They've been satisfying customers for 27 years. Combined, that's over 110 years of fine service and customer satisfaction. Spring Valley's three great new car dealers for great deals, friendly service, and no-pressure atmosphere. All just 30 minutes south of Rochester on Highway 63. football team by two touchdowns. That's why this play was so important early in the game. Exactly, and uh, the Spartans came with a big goal line stance, and that's what you need to have in a game like this. A first down carry for Ryan Finke doesn't net much. Mm. Matt McDonald with the tackle for Stillwater. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and that was about it. You know, we're talking about the Spartans, the big goal line stance. The drive, uh, uh, by, by the ponies was six minutes and 53 seconds. That's a lot of time with no points. And that was only 44 yards, so I, I'd give my hats off to uh, 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 Spartan there. Second and 10. Driving across the five, Elliot Norwood. With a pickup, tackled by Eric Williams. And they'll down it at the six-yard line, a pickup of five yards. Well, you don't like to get inside the red zone and come away with no points, but it's hard for the other team to score when they don't have the ball. That's right. And the red zone is always the toughest area to score anyhow. And uh, you look at it two points. 
if the offense can get it in, they did their job. But if the defense holds them, they did their job. And right now, the Spartans need to do their job, and they did it. And they have a little breathing room now to get out and maybe get the first down, keep the ball themselves. Dangerous play, third and five. From his end zone, heaving it is Graber, and it is nearly intercepted, a flag throw at the 28-yard line. Ryan Fletcher involved in the play. He nearly had another interception. And the mark-off apparently will come against the Ponies. On a play like this, Matt, the defender almost becomes the receiver, and the receiver becomes the defender. But what happened here, uh, Fletcher was uh, going for the out pattern, and the receiver went around and came back and uh, received the ball. Got away, but that's kind of a toss up there. But that's what it uh, looked like, and that's what the referee's called. Fifteen yards out to the twenty-one yard line, and a big first down because it gives the Spartans a little bit more breathing room. And a new series of downs. Two tough yards. Carl Taves and the rest of the Pony Pursuit caught up with him. Matt McDonald also there. Just two yards for Ryan Finke. You know, like I said, those are two tough yards. He ran about 20 just to get two yards. And again, the Stillwater defense is so tough with six shutouts on the year. That's why the goal line stand was huge. This time gets maybe just one yard. Eric Williams again in on the tackle. Third down and seven. Tape on the back of the helmets. The numbers written down on the tape. 25 for Jeff Robb. And 88 for Nick Teachin, both players who've been a big part of the Mayo's success this year, unable to play tonight. Graber throwing complete to the 29-yard line, short of first down yardage. The pass complete. Eric Wolf with the tackle. Completion to Mike O'Hare. And it'll be fourth down and two. Here's third and uh, seven, trying to pick up the first down. And Michael Hare brings in the ball, but a little bit short of the first down. You know, sometimes it's hard to teach to get to the point where you need to be. And it's a feel thing, and uh, he didn't feel for where he needed to be for the first down, so they come up a little short for the first pass to punt the ball away. Clint Jepson with his second punt, his first one 26 yards. This one, a better kick. He'll look at the 38. Ponies will start there with 2.57 left in the first half. It's Stillwater 7-0. We'll go to any length to beautify your home with United States seamless steel siding, custom made exclusively for your house. Cut to exact length for a beautiful maintenance-free exterior. No unsightly joints or splices. Not with United States seamless steel siding. There's even a lifetime warranty and you'll never have to paint again. United States Seamless Steel Siding. Beauty for a lifetime. Ryan Windows and Siding is your authorized U.S. Seamless Siding Distributor for Rochester and Southern Minnesota. In 1930, Arthur Herman started the Herman Insurance Agency. Today, a staff of 23 work with Raleigh and Mary Herman to continue our standard of excellence. Our reputation for commitment to service is enhanced with value-added features like insurance reviews, informational newsletters, and professional service agents. The entire staff of Herman Insurance continually strive for professional excellence through ongoing education, association with top-rated insurance companies, and by keeping you the customer first. Put your trust in Herman Insurance, partners with travelers for over 60 years. Rochester Mayo trying to win its first football championship. They are down 7 to nothing. Stillwater has the ball for the third time in the first half. Yes, hands off to Rump across 
the 40, and the pile moves forward to the 43-yard line. A gain of about four yards. Kevin Landher, the first man to reach Aaron Runk. Second down and six coming. Late in the first half. Glad you're with us for Prep Bowl 14. Pass throws. Complete to McGlynn. McGlynn has hit hard as he crosses midfield. Picked up with about four, maybe five more yards. Greg Picker with the defensive play for the Spartans. They'll spot it at the 47-yard line. Just a yard or so shy of first down yardage. We see here Hess throws the ball is real quick. And it's kind of like uh, the ball's behind his receiver, but he still picks up, at least close enough for the first down, but still short by a yard. Run through a big hole and a first down inside the 40 to the 38. Paul Seaver finally hold down Aaron Runk. You know, Aaron Runk, he runs the ball with authority, and you can't teach that in a runner. I mean, you've got to have it. You're, you're, you're kind of born with that natural instinct to run the ball hard. An 11-yard carry for Runk. He is now over 3,000 yards. 43 yards and 11 carries. Came in the game with 2,978. More coming here to the 30-yard line. Michael Ferrara and Niles Randolph combined to bring him down. Pick up of six, maybe seven more. They'll give him a six-yard pickup. Not a bad season for Aaron Rump. 23 touchdowns. That's uh, 142 points. That's uh, a season work in big time. Second and four. for brother Adam and Adam closed on that ball I thought when Justin Hess threw the ball this was going to be about five yards beyond Adam Runk but Aaron Runk's brother nearly made up enough ground to make the catch here well you know sometimes when you're brothers you kind of know what you need to do and he says hey you know we talk about him in the locker room whatever at home and say you know I'll put the ball out there you go get it and you turn on speed when you need to, and uh, right there, he did close on that ball. I thought he was going to catch it. Aaron Rump, great running back, Adam Rump. Very good wide receiver. Hess keeps. They got the right play set up here. Aaron Rump breaks free. Pulling the man out of bounds at the 13-yard line. What a determined run for Aaron Rump. Andy Jennison was dragged about seven yards by Aaron Rump. Here is a perfect way to set up a screen play. Fake to the fullback, throw it over, over to your best uh, runner and receiver, Aaron Runk. And he takes it off uh, one block and he carries another guy at just an, uh, out of bounds, another five yards. Completed the five yard line, pass intended, I think, for Bill McGlynn. He was pretty well covered by Paul Seaver. It'll be second down and ten. The Ponies hoping to cap off Prep Bowl 14 with their fourth state championship. Passes four of seven for 44 yards. Great picker. 
with the defensive stop, and now with 28 seconds left, the ponies will call a timeout. That's a good call to call a timeout, stop the clock, get, re get regrouped here as we take another look here. Hesse rolls out to his right, gets good protection here. He throws it, and he... That should... Well, the ball's beyond the other side. So the ball never made the, it in the end yeah, zone. Yeah, never made it in the end zone, so that's a good call. Very it's, close, uh, nonetheless. Very close. <laughs> <laughs> very close, so Adam uh, caught the ball, and uh, it's close for a touchdown, but the ball's on the other side of the... Oh, uh, line. <laughs> That's a judgment call. We're up here. They're down there. They'll mark it at the one-yard line. You can see Adam Runk <laughs> behind the face shield. A bit of a smile as they show the replay up here on the scoreboard. So the line of scrimmage, the one-yard line, and we'd like to welcome those of you watching us throughout the day on KTTC Television in Rochester. A lot of great football played in the southeastern part of the state this year, and four teams from that area have made it to Prep Bowl 14, including the Spartans. First and goal from the wall. Yes, for Rock, and he is knocked down as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Price, Joe C. Hewson, and Price, Cole Price, combined to make the tackle. The final timeout taken by Stillwater, and I think you can see George Stoll's concern. He does, no longer has a timeout, and he was worried about being able to get the field goal team in if they don't get the touchdown on second down. As you see, um, uh, Bo Price uh, cut Bronco uh, a feet right up Neeson, and yep. uh, he couldn't get through there, so that was a good play by the defense. Again, I tell you, the Spartans play good defense. They play good defense as they're on the goal line again, knocking, and the point is trying to get in. And they've turned them back uh, several times down. That was a great play of Mr. Price. If they can somehow survive this scare late in the first half without allowing a touchdown, even a field goal at this point, I think, would be a moral victory for the Spartans if they could get out of this first half down just 10 to nothing. You know, the good thing about it, though, if they can stop one more time, that clock could run out, and they may not get a chance to kick the field goal. Field goal. So one more big play by the defense, and uh, it could prove to be a winner for them. And they're back right now, up against the wall, against the corners that they get ready to score here. No timeouts left for the ponies. Yes, to the end zone, it's batted up, nearly intercepted. Andy Jennison nearly made the interception. In the quarterfinal win over Blaine, on the last play of the first half, Joe Seahusen intercepted a ball in a similar situation, took it back 95 yards the other way. It was the longest play in school history, and the Spartans nearly came up with another big play late in the half here in the championship game, and now they will call a timeout. They will call a timeout to make sure that the kicker thinks about this kick, and uh, hopefully he can miss it and then uh, the Spartans will dodge another bullet. James Miller, the Mayo head coach, taking over a couple of years ago for longtime coach, Ralph Pucci, who remains on staff here at Mayo. He is the former head coach, now an assistant coach. James Miller, well, they're gonna go for it, looks like. Was the assistant for a long time. He's the head coach, now in the state championship, and the kicking tee has been taken off the field by Aaron Danielson. So the Ponies were willing to settle for three, but now the Spartans have called a timeout. George Stoll thinking about it says, let's give it a chance. With 12 seconds left, they can throw the ball, throw an incompletion, and still have a chance on fourth down with 12 seconds left. Justin Hess pleading with his head coach. Then come on, let's give it a try. We got plenty of time. It has to be a throw here because if they run it and don't get it in the end zone, the time will expire. Yes. Into the end zone, incomplete, but all that happened is they lost five 
seconds. Now they can send the field goal kicking team on and try for three. And the Spartans might call another timeout here. <laughs> When you trust your quarterback, you can do that. If you trust Justin Hess not to make a mistake and to throw an interception, you can go ahead and try it with 12 seconds left. And now Aaron Danielson, three of three on the year, will try an 18-yard field goal to put the ponies up 10-0. Up and good. So the Spartans with one goal line stand early in the second quarter and another one late in the second quarter they've given up just three points really working right at the goal line and I think that they're pretty happy with that so far I think they again like I alluded earlier that they dodged the bullet there by uh, turning away the ponies from getting a touchdown they gave up the three points that's good defense any way you look at it if you're so close within five yards and they don't let them in, that's good. And matter of fact, on that play uh, uh, on Hesse there, David Johnson came from the outside, uh, number 87, and put the pressure to make Hesse throw the ball away sooner than he wanted to. So that's a good play on the defensive side for the Spartans. Still water leading 10 to nothing. I think the ponies will be kicking it deep to anyone. They'll probably try to ground the kickoff. An 18-yard field goal. Stillwater going 43 yards and 11 plays to make it 10 to nothing. In fact, they won't even use a tee, and Danielson apparently will kick a roller. the 32 yard line so there will be one play from scrimmage catching the ball and downing it was Kevin O'Hara and the Spartans will call another timeout with two seconds left the ponies as we mentioned moved into the top ranked spot in the weekly rankings when they beat defending champion Anoka in early October. And they've remained number one ever since. And a game last week, a lot of people thought that the Burnsville Stillwater game would be the championship game. And as it turned out, even though Stillwater won the game, it was not a very pretty game. Both teams turned the ball over quite a bit last week. And Stillwater beating Burnsville, ranked number two in the state, 31-14. Each team with five bubbles, and the Braves had eight turnovers. Ten to nothing, Stillwater, late, very late in the first half. Well, it seems like uh, the teams out there think about what they're going to do here. Basically, you know, they'll probably just take a running player and kneel down. I don't know if it's one thing tricky. Play some out of the sleeves. Uh, they have to... They've got somebody lined up deep, as you see. In the event of the safety, my goodness, they fumbled the snap. And the ponies pick it up. Oh, what a play for Stillwater! They turn it into a touchdown! Troy Johnson picked up the loose ball. What a heartbreaking play to close out the first half. Unbelievable. A high snap. High snap. Through Graber's hands. He misses it. Everybody's trying to pick it up. And Croy Johnson picked it up and took it in. Oh, my. With just two seconds left, a 20-yard fumble recovery 
It's 16-0 Stillwater. Up and good. The Mayo defense that had played so well for most of the first half, throughout the first half, and their great defensive stands negated by this misplay at the end of the half. Our ponies take advantage of the opportunity. That's right, an opportunity for uh, Johnson there, 32, takes it in, and what do you think you think is going to happen here with two seconds left? And it is 17 to nothing. They had a safety man back to prevent this from happening. Clint Jepson, the punter, was back and it looked like they were in punt formation. Oh, my. Tough play for the male Spartans. Let's go down to Jeff Grayson. All right, thanks, Dick. I'm with George Thor, the Stillwater coach. Coach, a big play there on the last play of the half. That surprised me. Uh, they lined up. I don't know if they were trying to bum a Ruski or, or what, but uh, they didn't have anybody really fooled with it. But uh, that was a good break for us. Uh, it's been a heck of a good first half. Uh, we, they stopped us on the one-yard line. Other than that, I thought we played really well. And I think uh, Mayo uh, is a very good football team. Defensively, they are guessing right most of the time against us. Now you got a 17 nothing lead going in at intermission. What do you tell you guys as they come out for the second half? We're going to see if we, got, if we can keep this shut out for two more quarters, uh, we'll be uh, home free. But uh, we're going to play it like it's 0-0 because uh, these guys are explosive, as you can see. Their running backs are fast, fast, fast. All right, George, thanks for joining us. Good luck in the second half. That's Stillwater head coach George Thole. We'll be back with more from Prep Bowl 14 when we come back. For information on where to obtain United Way Community Hero 96 Olympic Relay entry forms, call the KTTC Telecom USA and Touchline, 289-1010, Category 8000. Spread some holiday cheer with Dutch Boy from Menard. Brighten your home with a fresh coat of Dutch Boy confidence. An interior flat paint great for walls, ceilings, and more. Just $6.94 a gallon. Warm up your floors with Armstrong flooring. A wide selection is on sale, including Prevail. It's extra thick plus stain resistance. Just $7.77 a square yard. Get a new Armstrong floor for the holidays at Menard. Save big money at Menard. As a kid, the rules were a lot simpler. To have a friend, you have to be a friend. Give the other person a chance, too. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. At Home Federal Savings Bank, those rules still apply because we have not forgotten what's really important. Trust, concern, caring. Home Federal Savings, your local bank. Member FDIC. Over the years, you've known us as Lindsay, Miracle Water, and Service Sock, the three oldest and most respected water treatment companies in America. In 1987, these respected companies merged to become Echo Water Systems. Your local Echo Water Systems dealer is part of the largest manufacturer of water conditioning equipment in the world. Today, you know us as Lindsay Echo Water Systems of Rochester, and we've been improving the quality of water your families use and drink for more than 48 years. Call Lindsay Echo Water Systems of Rochester. Remember the winter of 93 when you couldn't buy a snow thrower anywhere? This year, Troy Build wants you prepared with the most reliable snow throwers ever made. Built with state-of-the-art steel augers, snow hog tires, super reliable Tecumseh Snow King engines, and backed by a seven-year warranty only from Troy Built. So this winter, be prepared. See our whole line of Troy Built snow throwers at your nearest Troy Built dealer today. Rochester Tractor and Equipment, located at 8160 Highway 52 North, Rochester. Your full line Troy Built dealer. Now, the Buckyland GMC dealers halftime report. Thanks to a wild play on the last play of the first half, Stillwater has a 17-0 lead over Rochester Mayo. We're at halftime in the Class AA Championship. Welcome back to Prep Bowl 14, everybody. I'm Jeff Grayson. We have halftime entertainment coming up. The Bloomington Jefferson High School Band will play for us. Let's go to public address announcer Dave Wiedner. It is halftime in America's finest high school football classic. The Minnesota State High School League's Prep Bowl 14, right here at the Hubert Day Country Metrodome in Minneapolis. Did you know young musicians and music educators are currently providing music and music education in their respective schools and communities 
all across our state on a daily basis. And tonight's halftime show is just a small example of the excellence in music education all across the state of Minnesota. At this time, the Minnesota State High School League wants you to meet the Thomas Jefferson High School Marching Band from Bloomington, Minnesota, under the direction of Dr. Earl Benson and Mr. Doug Orzalek. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to halftime. This is Ken DeFore, the voice of the Jefferson Marching Band. On the field now are the members of the Jaguar Band's percussion section, led by senior captain Cena Dolpe, and the Jefferson Flag Corps, led by senior captain Rebecca Shelley. And now from the sidelines, welcome the pride of Minnesota, the 200-member Jefferson Football Marching Band. Band, take the field. High School Marching Band. Band will entertain you this evening with music from the movies, music from America's dances, and a patriotic look at America's freedom. With music from the Paramount Pictures production, Raiders of the Lost Ark, the band comes downfield now with The Adventure of Indiana Jones, the Jefferson Football Marching Band. sidelines are the members of the Jefferson Flag Corps, led by senior captain Rebecca Shelley, and for the home stands, the Jefferson J.J. Dance Line, led by captains Angela Jordahl and Ginger Mansfield. The J.J.'s and Flags perform a routine for you now, written by Jack Morelli and recorded in 1978 by the village people. Here are the J.J.'s and Flags performing to YMCA. Let's watch and listen. <laughs>
JJ Dance Line and the Jefferson Flag Corps. Thank you, ladies. The members of the Jaguar Band now present a musical selection which was popular a few years back and continues to have wide appeal worldwide. Featuring a country line dance selection written by Brooks and Dunn in 1991, here are the 200 members of our band in a very large line dance group as they perform the Boot Scootin' Boogie. Jefferson Marching Band. Jefferson High School Band, the Jaguar Marching Band for the Halftime Entertainment. The GFC Halftime Report continues in a moment. Stay with us. This is Prep Bowl 14 on UPN 9. Half-price installation on every window we sell when you purchase Lowe Glass. Half-price installation on the beautiful Hartland Bays and Bows. 25% off the manufacturer's list and half-price installation on Reynolds Comfort Zone and the beautiful Vinyl Classic with a stainable oak interior. 
Don't buy windows until you examine your many choices and the low prices at the Sunroom and Window Store, Rochester, 1-800-499-7723. Buy it today, walk on it tomorrow is a saying we at Hiller Home Center have stood by for over 57 years. That simple phrase sums up the philosophy of what this family business was founded on, customer satisfaction. Combining quality carpet, vinyl, wood floors, ceramic tile, and area rugs with the highest standards of service available, Healers has created a team of professionals ready to serve you. Because you've made Hiller Home Center the business we are today, we thank you. Rochester, our number one. Hiller Home Center across from Shopco, South Rochester. Stop in today at Herring Art and Frame. Get the new Greenwich Workshop Artist's Holiday Dream Book 2. Fill out the enclosed registration blank by December 30th for a chance to win over 125 prizes. You'll also get the Angel's Gift Holiday Print just for registering. And while supplies last, receive a hand-carved Santa or snowman free with your purchase at Herring Art and Frame now until Christmas. Don't drive by. Drive up to Herring Art and Frame, the gallery on the hill, Highway 63 South Rochester. Open Monday and Thursday evenings now through Christmas. Now, brought to you by Tyson Foods and the world-famous athletic performers of the Ice Capades. A story you've known all your life. Cinderella, a timeless classic. Once upon a time, it touched your heart for the first time. Now, share it with your family. Watch as they fall in love like you once did with Cinderella. Coming to the Mail Civic Center November 30th through December 3rd. Tickets available at the Mail Civic Center box office or charge by phone 507-252-1010. And welcome back to Prep Bowl 14. We're at halftime of the Class AA game. Stillwater leads 17-0 against Rochester Mail. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Grayson. It is time to announce a winner in the First Bank Hardy's Game Time Giveaway. Our winner is Lillian Johnson of Anoka. She receives $1,000 plus a year's supply of big Hardy combo meals, all courtesy of First Bank and Hardy. The winner, again, Lillian Johnson of Anoka. Now, I would like to introduce, as you see Lillian's name there, I'd like to introduce Marsha Leach, First Bank Retail Division Manager, to announce our grand prize winner. I guess first, Marcia, tell us about First Bank's involvement. Certainly, Jeff. Um, first Bank has been involved with the Minnesota State High School League for over five years, working on sponsoring events like the Prep Bowl and fine arts activities. I think everyone wants to know about this promotion and who is the winner of it. Certainly. The promotion was uh, established trying to uh, create some activity and excitement around the Prep Bowl. And what we've done is we've worked with Hardee's and we had registrations coming in. People would come in and talk about our home equity product and we would um, register them. And over 8,000 people registered for the grand prize. Well, I've got the question that everyone's been wondering, who is the winner of the contest? The grand prize winner is Matt Christensen from Sock Rapids. Matt Christensen. There's his name on the screen, the winner of, from Sock Rabbids of the Game Time Giveaway. And any uh, final comments as, uh, to the, the prize? Anything else here, the excitement at the Prep Bowl? Well, I think Matt should be very excited because he's on his way to the big college game in Pasadena. And uh, that includes hotel accommodations, round-trip airfare, $1,000 spending money, and tickets to the game. Marsha, thank you for joining us. Marsha Leach from First Bank. And enjoy the second half. Thanks, Jeff. All right, that's Marsha Leach from First Bank. And that is the halftime report. Let's go upstairs now for analysis of the first half. Dick Bramer and Matt, well, Matt Blair. Sorry, guys. All right, thanks, Jeff. I'm not sure... Uh, that we can provide analysis for what happened on the last play of the first half. The uh, talk in the uh, press box during halftime, uh, generally in the form of a question, like what in the world happened? And I'm not sure we have any answers. No, we have no answer for that, but uh, what happened is uh, it's history now, and hopefully that uh, the Spartans can make up for it. What makes the job particularly tough for Mayo, down 17 points, Stillwater's defense, you see 72 yards in total offense for Mayo, but 50 of those yards came on Mayo's first possession, a possession that ended up in an interception. And there is also this, Stillwater in the regular season, in their eight regular season games, gave up a total of 18 points. They had five shutouts and gave up just one touchdown, no extra points in the regular season. That is why, one of the reasons why they have been ranked number one for a long time, a very, very stingy defense. And that's right. Uh, if you got a defense like that, it uh, shuts you out. You get uh, goose eggs at the end. It's going to be hard to come back and uh, score on a team uh, with that type of uh, uh, defensive uh, 
squad. George Stoll, no doubt happy with his team's offensive and defensive performance in the first 24 minutes. I think George got a probably Christmas gift on that last uh, <laughs> two seconds of the first uh, half there. Clint Jepson will kick it off, and the Spartans really, really need a big play early in the second half to pick up their spirits after what had to be a deflating final play in the first half. Jepson drives his kickoff, fielded on one hop. This is Dave Elwine, and Elwine takes it to midfield. Spun down by Tom Prow in the first big play of the second half. Goes to Stillwater as well. Got a big 31-yard punt return last week against Burnsville and a nice kick return here to open the second half. The Spartans did come out of the locker room all fired up. But they clearly need a big play to get momentum turned back around after they played the Ponies pretty straight out for most of the first half. Justin Hess going for a big play. He's got it. Adam Runk. And Runk is out of bounds at the 23. Joe Seahusen pushed him out of bounds. And the Ponies go up top on their first play from scrimmage. Stillwater Ponies come out uh, firing right away, and uh, Hess here throws over to uh, uh, Adam Runk. Uh, he catches the ball. He's our top receiver for the whole year, so you go with your best and uh, continue with the game plan, and that was a big play for the Ponies. 27-yard pickup for the 22. Bill McGlynn cuts outside twice. Flag is thrown on the face mask call as McGlynn takes it inside the 10. Andy Jennison finally got him out of bounds and somebody along the way got a face mask. And that'll take the ball inside the five-yard line. As we show in their uh, uh, replay here, they haven't stopped this play yet. And I've been watching this play. It's more of a pass draw play. And you see the face mask right there on McGuinn there. Uh, it's just like, you know, those things happen, but he didn't mean it, but that's what they can grab onto. Right Aaron, now, Aaron Runt ran a little interference. Great play. Matter of fact, McGuinn, you know, slow it up so Aaron can come up and make the block and so he can go around him and hope he can score. And uh, Shore is coming out, uh, fired up, ready to uh, put some more points on the board here and put this game away. Justin Hess puts the line of scrimmage the four-yard line. Aaron Rock scores a touchdown. are behind 23 to nothing. For Runk, his 53rd career touchdown at Stillwater. That big offensive line surges forward and just takes Aaron Runk with his strong and speed and takes him right across the goal line and uh, they go up 23 to zero now. Daniel Sonon to try the extra point. Gabe Elwine, the backup quarterback, the holder. good. Elwine, a defensive back on the Stillwater team, and Danielson kicks the extra point, and it's 24-0 Ponies, ranked the number one in the state. They're starting to smile along the Stillwater timeline. Just in time for the best shopping season of the year, the three-day after Thanksgiving Super Sale at the New March Furniture. Save 30 to 60% on everything in the store. Sofas, sofa sleepers, glider rockers, rocker recliners, cedar chests, mattress sets, living room and dining room groups. 90 days, same as cash, six months interest-free for qualified buyers. Extended sale hours, Friday 9 to 9, Saturday 9 to 6, and Sunday noon to 6. Save 30 to 60%. The three-day after Thanksgiving Super Sale at the New March Furniture Leroy. Sports, food, and leisure.
come together at the Viking Lounge Sports Bar and Grill. The Viking Lounge has great food, from appetizers to thick, juicy steak sandwiches. Enjoy reduced drink prices and complimentary hors d'oeuvres during the Monday through Friday happy hour from 4.30 to 7. Wednesday is happy hour night, 4.30 to close. Karaoke starts at 8 p.m. Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. It's a great place to meet after work and the best place to cheer on the home team during the big game. The Viking Lounge Sports Bar and Grill. Early in the third quarter, the Ponies make quick work on the way to their third touchdown. And they've now scored two touchdowns in the last one minute of play. The freakish play to close out the first half and a very quick drive for seven, opening up the third quarter. Danielson to kick it away. Picker and Jennison are back near the 10-yard line, but it won't get that time. Picked up, though, by Picker. Bobbled at the 20, and it's down at the 19. Stillwater taking the opening kickoff of the second half and getting it into the end zone in just three plays, less than a minute the last time. Less than a minute, that's big time. Uh, 49 yards, uh, four-yard run by Aaron Luck. Line of scrimmage the 19-yard line, and Steve Graber and the Spartans have a tough task ahead of them. Somehow they've got to find a way to get more than 24 points. I guess a team that doesn't give up many points. Ryan Finke finds the middle clogged by Matt McDonald. Somehow. Stillwater giving up just 18 points through the regular year in their first game of the playoffs against Woodbury gave up 28. And you can bet George Thole will be preaching defense for the balance of this second half. He mentioned the shutout. Obviously, he's not superstitious. He mentioned the shutout at halftime. Yes, he did. Leaning across the 25 out to the 27. Finky carrying before being tackled by Eric Williams. Like you were saying earlier, during the season, they only had scored 18 points on defense. Uh, given up 18 points all year, and on one game, they gave up 28, so you're right. Uh, George is saying, hey, you know, we need to start 0-0, zero, zero, start all over again, and let's see if we can do another uh, uh, two, uh, another half to uh, shut out the, uh, our opponents with Spartans. A burst up the middle. Elliot Norwood with a carry out to the 40, a first down before Adam Rump pinned him down. Elliot Norwood, usually a short yardage back for the male Spartans with a huge hole up the middle and a first down carry. That's on a good carry there on uh, Norwood's uh, part. Uh, last, this past season, he had 12 touchdowns, only 395 yards, but that time he picked up about 13. Norwood, the full back lined up in front of Ryan Finke. And Norwood again carrying for a short game, two, maybe three yards. Eric Williams made the tackle. You know, Dick, I look at games all the time, and one player works good, and they go right back to it at the same time and say, hey, maybe get it again, you know. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. But if I was a defensive player, I'd watch for it coming back again because it was a good play, play before. Second down and eight. his way out near midfield close to another first down well you just you can't say enough about the effort by ryan pinky regardless of what the final score is or what his final totals are eric wolf with the tackle pinky involved in the car wreck spent the better part of this week with his net in a brace and something about the state championship if at all possible everybody wants to play and ryan pinky was not going to be denied. He wanted to make sure he had a chance to play in the state championship game. Nice run up the middle again by Norwood, spinning his way across the 45, down to the 44. Eric Williams again with the tackle. Norwood just about lost the ball, but he wrapped it up as he went through the line. And he picks up another first down for the Spartans. A 
again, you know, the Spartans have a good drive going right now, and their thing is working right. They need to keep it going, get a touchdown, get a little momentum going their way. Spinning his way inside the 35. He's got a male first down at the 33. Matt McDonald finally caught up with Ryan Finke. There's a little toss out to Finky there, and he makes a good cut back. Holes there, and he gets out, tries to get outside. He spins, and uh, he just doesn't quit. I, I like this kid. Uh, you know, he has good uh, balance, and that's what you need to have in a running back. First and ten, Spartan. Finky couldn't quite bust it outside there to make sure he... Didn't go any further was Gabe Elwine. David Horning also in on the tackle, but Elwine was the first person to make contact with Pinky. If he had been able to break it outside, he might have been able to take it all the way in. Watch number 22, Gabe Elwine here. Pinky again, cuts outside, cuts inside, back outside, and uh, he just doesn't quit. In a four. Steve Graber leans across the line of scrimmage, picks up a couple of yards. Matt McDonald with the tackle for Stillwater. It was in Mayo's first possession, on Mayo's first possession of the first half, where they got to about this place on the field. Their drive stalled. They ended up throwing a big interception on fourth down. And that's a good point you bring up again. Gets in that gray area, pass or run, third down and about four. So it's uh, just keep your eye on, 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 on the ball here. Maybe a pass. No room for Elliot Norwood. He got back to the line of scrimmage. He'd be lucky. Nate Dwyer clogged up the middle. It's fourth down, and they'll call it fourth down and three. They'll like to keep it on the ground. Their top receiver, Joe C. Houston with just 23 catches on the year. It's going to be tough to pick up three yards on a fourth down carry here. Graber with the pitch. Ryan Finke wrapped up by Eric Herring. The Ponies have yet to give up a point in the double-A championship game on the Lincoln Mercury Dealer Association scoreboard. Real savings, 12 months, interest refinancing, and the best selection of quality furniture in southern Minnesota. You'll find it all this weekend at Drury's in Fountain. Now during our Thanksgiving weekend furniture sale, Drury's are discounting everything from 30 to 50% or more. All on top brands like Thomasville, Pennsylvania House, and Flex Steel. And there's more. With a qualifying purchase, Drury's will give you 12 months interest refinancing. That's no finance charge for one full year. But it all ends Monday at 9 at Drury's in Fountain. What's tough about being in this business is when you get a call after somebody has been broken into. Then what you need to do is to help reestablish the peace of mind that they have to have to go on living in that house again. It's never too late to install an alarm system. We can get that peace of mind established because that's what we sell. It's not too late. All one has to do is call us here at Custom Alarm, the region's leading security expert. There is security in knowing us. Football at their own 33. Yes, hands off up the middle. This is Bill McGlynn. And McGlynn picks up five yards before he's turned back by Greg Pickard. The Mayo Spartans gave up 10 points on defense in the first half and the big turnaround play late in the first half and the ponies have added another touchdown since then we've got less than five minutes to play in the third quarter run 
for the first down carry out to the 46. Paul Seaver made the tackle. And Seaver, a little uh, slow in getting up. He'll go back to the huddle. Mayo beating Cambridge one week ago tonight. Beating an awfully good Stillwater team here in the championship game. of four on the play. It'll be second down. Well, they'll spot it at the 43 and a loss of three. It'll be second and 13. Good play on the defense by Kevin Lanner. It comes in and he uh, brings down Hess. Great defensive play. You know, uh, it seems like the Spartans defense just doesn't quit. as he gets to the 48-yard line. Paul Seaver again on the tackle. And it'll be third and long, about eight yards. And Hess will have to strap on and lace up his shoe real quick. Get the play call to get the team up to the line of scrimmage. Clock running, 3.05 left in the third quarter. On the loads it into the Mayo bench. And the Spartans again putting some pressure on. Kevin Lander was there. As well as David Johnson. Here's a pressure the, by Lander and uh, David Johnson there. And uh, Hess just throws the ball away, and he's lucky he did uh, throw it away. Ryan Salmon's first punt of the game. by Sailor. And at the 21, and dribbles forward. They'll mark it up here at the 19-yard line. We'll take a break with 2.38 left in the third quarter. Stillwater in control. There's more than meets the eye in Spring Valley. It's like a three-sided coin. With March and Motor Company providing Chrysler, Plymouth, and Dodge for 60 years. Zymus Motors, who've been around for 24 years, giving you the best in Chevrolet, Buick, Old Pontiac, and Geo. And Peterson Motors for Ford and Mercury. They've been satisfying customers for 27 years. Combined, that's over 110 years of fine service and customer satisfaction. Spring Valley's three great new car dealers for great deals, friendly service, and no pressure atmosphere. All just 30 minutes south of Rochester on Highway 63. Stay tuned for an important announcement from Audio King. Uh, over here, is it true there's a super Sony deal? Bingo! That's no payments, no interest until 1997? Yes! 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 Very young gentleman from the uh, Highlights magazine. You're talking big screens to walk me? I'm saying it's so, don't you know, Joe? You're saying no interest, no payments until 1997. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah! The Sony Super Deal, not a penny until 1997.
Rose is way along the right side on a reverse. Picks up maybe a yard. Brad Fessler with the tackle. The problem is, from a male perspective, they need to come back. They need some big plays, but the bulk of their offense is built on their ground game, and it's tough against this very good Stillwater defense to expect to come up with too many big plays on the ground. That's right. Uh, you need big plays uh, on the ground if they run 34 yards to touchdown, but right now they need to go in the air and try to make some huge plays. Elliot Norwood with a first down carry out to the 44. Adam Runk with the tackle. George Stoll said at halftime he thought the Mayo backs were explosive, very quick. And we have seen that here tonight. Yes, as you see Norwood here, you know, cut through the line, and he's so quick, and they pick up another first down. And if they keep that up, that's a pretty good uh, rate. That's uh, 11 yards here, 12 yards there. It takes a moment to get down to the end zone with a uh, yard uh, gain that way. 1-10 left in the third quarter. Nowhere to go. Graber pounded down to the turf by Ryan Salmon, his 14th sack this year. Line of scrimmage is a 39. It'll be second down and 15. Pick up of six, maybe seven yards. Gabe Elwine with the tackle. It'll be third down and eight. And time will wind down in the third quarter. The Stillwater Ponies won the state championship in 1975. They won it in 82. They won it in 84. George Stoll has been there for the first three. And he's hoping to pick up a fourth here tonight. Subway and KTTC are proud to bring you Sports Extra. We'll select the Subway Play of the Week, and the winning team wins a six-foot party sub. Before or after the game, grab your home team and score big at Subway with deals on your favorite six-inch or foot-long or party sub. Don't drop the ball. Feed the team at Subway. Feed your hunger with tasty servings and healthy savings at Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. Some garage door manufacturers warranty certain parts for 10 years. But the Rainer Showcase System is the first to warranty the door and all of its parts for as long as you own your home. And that could be a very long time. The Rainer Showcase Garage Door. The only door with all of its parts warranted to last as long as you own your home. Call Quality Overhead Door in Rochester at 281-2772. With Matt Blair, Dick Bramer at the Metrodome, the Stillwater Ponies, 12 minutes away from the AA State Championship. The Spartans will need a furious fourth quarter comeback to make a game of it. Graber buried at the 39-yard line. Andy Agramson and others there for the Ponies. We mentioned that the Ponies already have six shutouts this year. That ties the school record. So they are well aware of that, and they would like to not only win a championship, but set a school record for shutouts in a season. George Stoll hoping for number seven. Down by 24 points. The Spartans faced with fourth down and 15. They set up in punt formation. Clint Jepson. A pretty nice kick inside the 30-yard line, fielded by Elwine. To the 35-yard line. Dave Elwine does a good job on defense and on the special teams. Matt Greason with the tackle for Rochester Mayo. I think 
what's happening now. Uh, I think uh, Mayo's, uh, you know, not able to pass the ball, which the running game is their ga uh, game. The defense has to suck it up here and try to get the ball, make a big play, just to at least get on the scoreboard. From the 35, Mike Gavone. Penalty uh, will be stepped off against Rochester Mayo. And that'll make it first and five. Looks like the metro area. Still water, of course, in the fringes of the metro area, but it looks like the metro area is going to win another double A championship. Both of the schools are in the metro area, and they've won every title since 1987. Jeremy Bakken with the tackle. Uh, Bill McGlynn's first down carry. No gain on the play. Well, we'll give him a yard. It'll be second down and four. Anoka, the champion last year. Glenn with a first down carry into Rochester Mayo territory. Joe Seahusen with the tackle at the 47. Niles Randolph has been kept busy defensively for Mayo. McGlynn here takes it up the middle. Holes are been open at uh, ease now. Uh, the Ponies offensive line has been blocking well all day. 9.45 to play. Diving across the 45 to the 44. Randolph in on the play for Mayo. We saw Rochester Mayo in the girls' basketball tournament. Champions last year. And the Mayo girls are ranked number one in the preseason ratings, or the early season ratings. And a great year for the Mayo football team as well. to Runk and he is hit immediately. Paul Seaver in the backfield. Pins Runk for a loss of a couple of yards. Paul Seaver's been having a good day on defense. He has at least about uh, six or seven tackles there. As you see, Paul Seaver's nice through there and makes a big play on Runk. It'll be third down and nine. sideline for Aaron Danielson. Here's the attendance today, 21,303. The Spartan uh, defense held again. That's, that's a good job. Three and out. Forcing a Stillwater punt. Still Ryan down. Salmon will hit it from his 45. And over end kick, fielded at the 14. Running for his life is Greg Pickard. Maybe out to the 15. The Ponies excel on the special teams as well. On the Menard scoreboard, they have the lead, 24-0. to holiday value. Save on storm doors from Emco. The Forever Glass door features great look, solid construction, peak energy savings, and a lifetime warranty. Just $158. Brighten your home with fluorescent light bulbs from Sylvania. They use less energy than regular bulbs, plus last 10 times longer. Just $396 after mail-in rebate. Get a brighter outlook with Sylvania from Menard. Save big money at Menard. <laughs> The Gallery, yeah. 
The Galleria Mall in downtown Rochester, the place everyone's going. There's so much to see and do. A great place to meet friends, so easy to get to. And parking is always free with validation. Gotta get to the Galleria. The Galleria Mall. See you there this weekend. 24 nothing. Stillwater in front. Eight minutes and ten seconds. They hope separating them from a state championship. The male Spartans with just one loss on the year. Apparently headed for their second. No running room at all up the middle for Ryan Finke. Bill McGlynn with the tackle. Brad Fesler also in on the play. It was Fesler who made the tackle. Excuse me. Joe C. Hewson. Even though his team is down. Pretty content, I think, with the way the season has gone. They're getting beaten by a very good football team. Maybe the events of last weekend have helped put everything in perspective. Uh, if not just on the Mayo sideline, perhaps even on the Stillwater sideline. Uh, the tragedy, near tragedy, involving some of the Mayo football players. George Stoll's team a powerhouse team this year, offensively and defensively. Lock running now, just seven minutes left. A catch at the 25-yard line. Tackled made by Ryan Fletcher. Seahusen was down, got up, caught the ball. And he's close to a first down, and we'll see what the flag's all about. Mm. A penalty against John Marshall, or excuse me, whoops, <laughs> Rochester Mayo. I think that was more of a uh, uh, call that uh, shouldn't have been made because of uh, the pattern there. It seemed like uh, two of the guys ran each other and one kind of collided. Uh, hands were extended out and uh, see who was, was a victim of uh, being called for pass interference there. Penalty moving it back inside the 10 down to the 8-yard line. And it'll be third down and 17. Penalties will hurt you at times. couple months of the hockey season. Broken ankle. He can afford to smile. Even though you can understand his disappointment not being able to play in the state championship game. Right. Uh, you know, being in your uh, you know, high school days, if you get a chance to go to the state uh, championship game and you get hurt, you know, you think of that, man, I'd like to be out there, but Time, sometimes, you know, you can't do that, and uh, at this fortunate, uh, he's not able to play. Who knows, might see him in the state hockey championship in March, if he can recover, and if Mayo is a good team, Clint Jepson will stand in his end zone. Nearly put a knee to the turf, fielding the snap. A low kick fielded at the 31. This is Runk, still going. Still going. Aaron Runk into the end zone. A 31-yard punt return for Aaron Runk. The Star Tribune Metro Player of the Year, the MVP of the Twin City Suburban East Conference the last couple years, and now his third touchdown of the AA championship game. Missed tackles there. Seems like the Spartans are getting a little tired and Runk is just Turned it on for the touchdown. And it seems like when you're a runner like that, uh, you make a few big plays, you know, uh, you even get uh, a little bit stronger in what you want to do and accomplish. And one takes it in for the score. 30 to nothing with 6.24 left. Aaron Rump, who's old. 
younger brother Terry caught the game winning touchdown pass back in 1982 as the Ponies won the championship back then another championship coming two years later and now Aaron and Adam may share in a championship Danielson with the kick up and good, 31 nothing. Stillwater. We'll return to the Metrodome with more of the double-A championship in just a moment. <laughs> 200 million years ago, your driveway was a tropical forest. Just a reminder, times have changed. It's a cold reality, winter's back. But white outdoor snow throwers are ready. Your white outdoor dealer features a full line of single stage, two stage, and steerable track snow boss snow throwers with features so innovative, they'll never become extinct. Snow boss snow thrower line, only from white outdoor. Get one now, before the next ice age is upon us. Rochester Tractor and Equipment in Rochester. Diamonds and rubies, sapphires and emeralds, jewelry for Christmas to last through the seasons. For that perfect gift which they will adore, Rochester Lapidary Jewelers has this and much more. Earrings and pendants, pearls and beads, stocking stuffers all or to put under the tree. Quality and service at affordable prices. Jewelry from Rochester Lapidary is surely the nicest. Monday through Saturday from 9 to 6. Sundays till Christmas, noon till 5. A Merry Christmas from Rochester Lapidary Jewelers. Broadway across from Shopco North. kick has always been kicked down outside in the numbers and that's good for a team that's, that's aggressive comes down and, and makes the, the recovery there and uh, special teams is like three quarters of the game so they practice on it they have good coaching here good coverage on the kick return as Jennison was able to get it back to the 23 in that dick first down and 10 they've been number one second half of the year and they may very likely finish number one. Pinky to the line of scrimmage, that's it. Spilled as he got to the line by Carl Page. Clock running, 5.45 left. Chester Mayo sideline, Andy Jennison. Understandably discouraged. Pinky. Leaning across the 25 and taking a pretty strong hit. Suffered whiplash last Saturday and a pretty good pop on the helmet, but he is all right and has played very well here tonight given the circumstances. Going against top-ranked defense. And still putting together a pretty good game on the ground. It'll be third down and eight. With five minutes left in the football game. And you know they have uh, they have to pass. The Spartans have to pass to get the first down. Uh, otherwise, you know, it's going to be tough to run to get uh, eight yards. Still running hard is Elliot Norwood. And Norwood gets it out near the 30. About four yards shy of first down yardage. Adam Rump with the tackle. We mentioned last year, Anoka won the double-A championship. The year before that, it was Apple Valley. The year before that, Lakeville. Burnsville in 1991. Anoka again in 1990. Burnsville in 89. Then Blaine in 1988.
Fourth down and four, and the Spartans will kick it away. Jefferson this time standing inside his 15. So with 3.54 left, the ponies are ready to celebrate, even though it would be hard to tell that from the expression from George Stoll. We'll go to any length to beautify your home with United States seamless steel siding, custom made exclusively for your house, cut to exact length for a beautiful maintenance-free exterior. No unsightly joints or splices. Not with the United States seamless steel siding. There's even a lifetime warranty, and you'll never have to paint again. United States seamless steel siding. Beauty for a lifetime. Ryan Windows and Siding is your authorized U.S. seamless siding distributor for Rochester and Southern Minnesota. From the beginning, Auto Owners Insurance realized the importance of providing small business with the best coverage possible. That's why Lansing Printing has been an Auto Owners customer for more than 50 years. That says a lot about how we meet the needs of business owners. At Auto Owners, the focus of our company is on the customer and building relationships that ensure success. The C.O. Brown Insurance Agency. Stillwater heading for a perfect 14-0 mark. They are three minutes and 54 seconds away from winning half their games this year with shutouts. It's 31 to nothing. They've got the football from the 36. And some of the backups getting in there for both teams. David Johnson making the tackle for Mayo. Matt Swenson quarterbacking the ponies. Number 15. Hands off there. You can tell that when the second team is in there, things don't go quite as well. But again, the male defense got to give them credit too. They've been playing hard all night long. Rob Shanley, the ball carrier there. Second down and 10. And a handoff again. Swenson handing off to Andy Kaysen by Paul Seaver. Number 34, Seaver has been around the ball all night long. Good hitting linebacker. Rochester Mayo will finish its year 12 and 2. Two and a half minutes left in the double-A title game. Pitch behind the running back, Rob Shelley, picked up by Mayo's Tom Prow, and there goes the shutout. Prow scores a touchdown. Tom Prow picking up the loose ball and running it in for Mayo's first score of the game. A 31-yard fumble recovery. Here we see that the handoff is not quite pitched back there right. And uh, Tom Powell picks it, scoops it up, takes it in for a 31-yard fumble recovery. And now, that shutout now is no longer. Mayo gets on the board with six points for a touchdown. It's 31 to 6. <laughs> I don't know if that's a comment on the Metrodome or what. Win or lose, I guess it's better to be comfortable than uncomfortable. <laughs> Quite a long uh, history of success at Stillwater for... George Thole in his 25th year, four state champions, and is, again, with the exception of last year, a long string of getting into the playoffs, which is just as impressive. 
Like I told you before, uh, Dick, uh, when I came in at 74 and they won the state championship 75, we met him out to the shore, Lowell Inn, uh, at uh, Mr. Palmer's uh, place out there. And he was proud then, and I know he's proud tonight uh, of his team winning their fourth uh, state championship uh, title. Well, a big moment for Clint Jepson. He's got a chance to kick a point in the state championship game. Up and good. Right Jepson, cool. the backup kicker, uh, kicker, kicking in place of Jeff Robb, unable to play because of the injury he suffered in the car accident last Saturday. And a nice moment for Clint Jepson. And it's 31 to 7. Here we take another look at uh, the second team is in there now, and it's a bad pitch uh, by Swenson. And then the Tom Powell picks it up and uh, takes it in for the score for Rochester Mayo. He's <laughs> kind of slowing down. He's kind of fumbled. I mean, he stumbled there a little bit at the end. He's trying to slow down. He's so excited here. Here we should take another ground look at it. Swenson just kind of threw it back too far behind his uh, ball carrier. So the defense scores points for Rochester Mayo. And with 2.16 left, they trail by 24. Well, do you onside or do you uh, kick it deep? Of course, you need the ball if you get onside it. We'll see what Clint Jepson does with the kickoff here.
the Stillwater Ponies, the champions for the fourth time in school history. A pretty impressive showing by the Ponies, who showed why they were ranked number one through the second half of the year. Unable to play because of the broken ankle suffered last week. And the male Spartans dealing with the adversity earlier in this week of preparation for the AA championship game. They can be very proud of their season. It's a simple matter, I think, Matt, of Stillwater being a little bit too good of a team, at least tonight, for the male Spartans. You know, it's always uh, a note saying that, you know, what happens to you if you had this player or that player. And I, I just think uh, Stillwater is probably, you know, the best thing I've seen in a long time, sure. uh, regardless of uh, who you have out there because they're well coached. But given a chance, you know, if the players would have been in there, it may have made a difference uh, for the whole team. But again, uh, Stillwater, I think, uh, deserves to be the chance uh, uh, this year, and uh, maybe next year Mayo would have another chance at it. A dominant performance in the title game for the Stillwater Ponies. They didn't get the shutout, but I don't think any of them care about that right now. A win is a win, a state championship is a state championship. And for the seniors who have played their last game at the high school level, some of these players will certainly go on and play more football, but for the senior players for Stillwater, what a way to finish a great high school career winning a state championship. Quarterback Justin Hess is in there someplace. He's a senior. Aaron Runk is a senior. George Thole and the Ponies are double-A champs. Let's go down to Jeff Grayson. All right, thanks, Dick. 13 years after your brother Terry makes the winning play in the prep bowl, Aaron Runk, congratulations. Three touchdowns, and you're the state champion. Still what? Well, this is like, I can't explain the feeling right now. It's just three years I've been, I mean, actually, more than that, but three years I've been working for this, and I've been dreaming about it for a lot more than that, and it's finally here. Can't believe it. How special is this? I mean, the family history and your family and to win it. I don't know, man. This is unreal. I, it's just, it'll sink in when I get home. I just gotta enjoy it with my, my buddies and my team. And, I don't know, it's just unreal. It's just great to bring you back home. Congratulations, Aaron. We'll let you celebrate. Thank you. Back to Dick Bramer. Dick? I think it's safe to say he was a pretty excited young man and for just cause. And, you know, he's a good call. He talks about his team, you know. It wasn't just yeah. I, I, yeah. it's a team, and that's good. That's a good feeling. A joyous sideline along the far side of the field here at the Metrodome on the First Bank scoreboard. You see the story. We've wrapped up our football here at Prep Bowl 14. The Stillwater Ponies, the best in double-A this year. UPN9's game time coverage is brought to you by Subway, locally owned and community involved. The United States Postal Service and Northwest Airlines. Some people just know how to fly. If it comes in leather, at Wilson's The Leather Expert, it comes at a better price. Wilson's The Leather Experts. Call 1-800-3-LEATHER for the store nearest you. Wilson's incredible under $20 leather gift sale. You see, money really is no object. Wilson's The Leather Experts. Call 1-800-3-LEATHER for the store nearest you. If you're trying to decide what computer to buy, what upgrades to make, what software to buy, if you're trying to decide what's the right printer, or the right laptop, and what's the right price to pay. There's one state championship. Prep Bowl 14 turns out to be a showcase for Southern Minnesota football. 
Good evening, everyone. The 1995 high school football season is in the books now. Yeah, what a conclusion it was to uh, a real memorable season. Thanks for joining us on Sports Extra. I'm Dan O'Hara alongside Pat Lund, a couple of gridiron geeks and <laughs> proud of it. In the next 15 minutes, we'll have all the action from games involving area teams. But we start things off with the Mayo Spartans trying to bring Rochester its first big school title since 1974. Yeah, Mayo's Steve Graber has been red hot in the postseason, but he hasn't faced too many Ds like Stillwaters this year. The top-ranked Ponies going for their seventh shutout in 14 games. First possession, Graber picked off by Ryan Pletcher, and the Ponies take over with a potent offensive attack. Didn't take him long to get it in the end zone. Aaron Rump, the two-yard plunge. So right out of the gate, the Spartans are down 7-0, but Mayo would show some signs of life with a defensive goal line stand. Fourth and goal, and the Spartans get a big stop to take possession of the ball. But here comes the play that really ended the Spartans' chances. It came just before the end of the half. They set up like they're going to kneel down on it. Instead, it's a, a busted play, a busted trick play. Not quite sure what they were trying to do. Stillwater scoops it up, takes it in for the touchdown on the final play of the half. 17-0 Stillwater at the break. And in the second half, they all really never had much of a chance. The Metro Player of the Year, this guy, Aaron Runk. And on the punt return, it shows why. 31 yards for the touchdown, the third of the game. But at least the Spartans kept the Ponies from getting the shutout. Fourth quarter, Stillwater coughs it up, and it's Tommy on the spot. Tom Prowl, the 31-yard fumble recovery for the touchdown. But Stillwater wins it tonight, 31-7. to Still a hell of a ride for the Mayo Spartans. Oh, sure they was. win 12 games in a row, and I don't think there are a whole lot of us out there that predicted that they'd be playing for a state championship. And they knew to beat Stillwater tonight had to be a perfect game. You can't give up the big play, and you can't have turnovers, and both those things both happen of those tonight things to Yeah, will be interesting to hear. Tomorrow night, you will have reaction from the Spartans and from James Miller on... See what happened that last play. What were they thinking <laughs> on that play before halftime? I think they thought maybe they could catch him sleeping, and uh, they didn't. it ended up backfiring on him, yeah. Well, 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 we move on now to Class B a game where the Kingsland Knights look to finish off a remarkable...